and others, a lot been battling uh, these various sicknesses, and so uh, thank you. We're praying for you guys as well, and not only those who are here, but beyond, and those listening. Uh, of almost plague proportions, <laughs> what's going on. But Psalm 91 addresses that, doesn't it? You know, And it's addressed many other places in the scriptures. But the Lord himself uh, is our deliverer, our healer, the miracle worker that he is. And uh, these are good times, as is all times, to allow the growth of trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Do not lean to our own understanding and all of our ways to acknowledge him. Right? Isn't that truth? It's always been true. That's the dynamic of it, but it becomes more personal in such battles. And I think myself, a part of the activities, purposes, will of God, not, not to put sickness on us, but in this way to use these dynamics um, to further teach us to trust him, as well as strengthening our immune systems by actual battle, right? We get trained by battle, and you're, so does the human body, right? So why don't we stand this morning uh, thank God for the rain in the heat of summer. We're going to be glad that we had it. <laughs> and we'll remember that, right? Now, my entire property is on well water. So I appreciate the rain. <laughs> let it rain, Lord, let it rain. <laughs> so it is well with our souls. When we have a full well, <laughs> otherwise the stench is bad. <laughs> the stink from not being able to shower <laughs> goes before you like a plague. <laughs> so when I passed you by this morning, I hope you didn't smell a stench. <laughs> I did uh, get cleaned. <laughs> Amen. That's just poor humor, but it's all you got. When it's all you got, it's all you got. That's all I got. So let's go before the Lord. Lord, thank you again for yourself. You send the rain. Thank you. And you measure it, Lord, uh, as the Lord. You measure it. And we're, we thank you and appreciate the fact that you measure and you give, we receive, Lord. In the same way, inwardly speaking, there's a measurement of you for this time of increase of yourself. We acknowledge that, Lord, otherwise there would be no use in having such a meeting. <coughs> there is an increase that we're desiring of you, your very person, by your spirit. And we're asking you, Lord, not to miss on our part, my part, any of that increase of you. Lord, it is not an intellectual ascent that we're after. It is living experience inwardly to where the scriptures and where the word of God you being that and you speaking that have a, an effect within us that is of the Spirit, that is of a maturing, that is of your increase, of your life, of your presence, of your will, of your purpose, of all that is in your eternal mind and heart, but Lord, all bound up singularly with you. It's your increase we seek, Lord. 
all of that that is the benefits that I spoke of comes from you and of you. Increase in us, Lord, is our prayer. Spirit of God, we would join with you in your will in this. We would recognize the Spirit of God's work, the Spirit of God's will. We would recognize what you are doing, what you are saying, Spirit of God, and have been, to make the Lord Jesus Christ real as life within us, truth within us, way within us. That is your work. It is not a mystery anymore nor is it meant to be, nor is it meant to be, Lord, coupled with a million other things that you're doing. It is quite simple what you're doing. It is not the complex thing that it's been made to be. You're not doing all things. You're doing all things in Christ. And you're making Christ to be real to us. All we're saying and asking, Lord, is make Christ to be real to us. Not, Lord, this ascent in our minds to knowledge that is of the wrong tree. You are the tree of life. And the knowledge of the Lord comes from life, inward, experiential, and in the journey outward as you teach us of yourself. I thank you for the conflict. I thank you for the battle. Light and dark don't get along. They're not meant to. Thank you, Lord. Truth and a lie don't get along. They're not meant to. Truth will conquer. Light will conquer. You are both and more. We're asking you, Holy Spirit, that by the working of you to bring that necessary increase of Christ by the Spirit to us inwardly in this time. Let us not miss this moment or any other moment, but we're focused on the moment we're in right now. The past is the past and the future, you you are that future. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be fully engaged with you internally. Help us to be able to hear I ask even now, Lord, that all that would prevent us from really hearing beyond our natural ear, hearing what the Spirit has to say to the church, break its power against us that we can hear what the Spirit is saying. Not just in this meeting, but yes, but every day. I'm asking for the breaking of confusion off of us as God's people. You know, many times we're confused because we're weighing several things um, and can't seem to come to the one thing. Psalm 27, one thing have I asked of the Lord and this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to dwell in his temple. One thing, Christ being the one thing, not something to do. Don't get that, don't get mistaken by or thrown off by that. It's not one thing we do. It's the person within us, Christ, who's the one thing. I'm asking right now, Lord, clean out, spiritually speaking, our ears from too many voices and the debris from those voices. I'm talking about teachings. I'm talking about doctrines. Be they of demons of humans or humans, it doesn't matter. To Christ becomes the truth within us that defeats the lie so that the confusion is gone. And we behold in you the way, and thus the way forward. That you as the way ordain our steps.
that we not have a misstep. And if we do, by your spirit, you get us right back on track with you. Been a lot of missteps, but the Lord's faithful, isn't he? Get us right back on track. Our eyes back on Jesus, in other words. So we bless you this morning, Lord. We receive, Spirit of God, of the deposit, the fresh deposit of Christ that is available to us in this moment. That all the other things, they're just things, all the other things dissipate right now, we ask. And let Christ arise. Christ arise. Christ become our focus. Christ become our life in this moment. Dominating, superior, infinitely superior. In the name of Jesus.
shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face and oh praise the name of the Lord our God praise his name forevermore endless days we'll sing your is the word of God and 
on his thigh was written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And out of his mouth, two edged sword to deal with the nations. Deal with our hearts this morning, Lord. Deal with the spirit, the spirits that remain within us, Lord. Place your eyes of fire on us, Lord. Burn up the chaff. Clear the field, Lord, so you can plant the seed of Christ.
Thank you, Lord, for living by divine design in such a time as this. You meant for us to live in these times. Thank you. Not only is there comfort, but more importantly, there is purpose, divine purpose. May this come from within us. We accept that from and of and back to you. Your purpose, your divine design and all that that means. Let us run for the right prize in the right race help us Lord to not pull over into a rest area but to find you inwardly as our rest and keep running and if we're in the rest area Lord uh, boot us out and put up a sign restricted no believers. <laughs> I'm actually seeing that. That's why I prayed it. It's not just a humor. <laughs> That's what the Lord wants me, us, his people to understand. Rest areas of those ways are uh, of the flesh and not of the spirit. They are traps to get us disconnected to the head and to the fight and conflict that the body's to be a part of with the head. It is by your energy. The problem is our own energies have been involved and so we tire quickly and easily. But there is divine energy called Christ in us by the Spirit. And therein is our trust. Increase is the right prayer increase Lord decrease of my own energy which is so limited an increase of Christ now this is good for us no matter what age you are but for we who are elderly this is particularly important you know when you're young you can beat your head up against the wall many 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 times and finally realize that it's your head that's taking the hit not the wall <laughs> Right, isn't that right, brother? I've done it. Been there, done that, got many, many, too many t-shirts for that. But when you get older, hopefully, I hope this is true of me. Don't you hope it if you're older? Uh, you learn that that wall is not a door. <laughs> not an open door of the Lord particularly. <laughs> he has not set that as an open door before us. Um, may the Lord enable from within us to run this race to the knowing of him to the fullness of him corporately corporately 
not just individually. No loners. There's no such thing. There's not meant to be. There is, but there's not meant to be. Right? Loners. God's after a corporate expression of his son to fill the universe beyond this world. And it'll be corporate. We might as well get on board now. Amen? So God enable us and help us. Amen. So I want those who are going to receive the offering to come. And while they're coming, uh, thank you, Andy, so much. Um, while the Lord's here among us in presence, uh, 12, 13 years ago, it's a little bit of an estimation on my part in this. I, I'm, what I want to share is for prayer purposes. 12, 13 years ago was in a, in a prayer meeting and an angel walked into the prayer meeting. As he walked into the prayer meeting, he had a star in his left hand. I couldn't help but notice, wondering what is that in your left hand? He raised it up and he said, this is the lone star. And as soon as he said it, I saw a map of the United States flag, the 50 stars, but all in black and white. And the angel said, uh, it's the Lone Star State will be the first one to come off the flag. He said, there's 50, wait, 49. And he kept going down as star after star came off the flag. How many know that this operation in Texas has a name? You know what the name is? The Lone Star Operation. <laughs> That's alerting to me. I didn't know that until last night. That that's its name. I've watched this through years, by the way, here and overseas, these kinds of activities of the Lord and the this, this specificness coming out and things that are seen and then the way they come out. I've learned and I'm needing to learn and I'm still learning. I've learned over time in this to take note when this kind of stuff happens. Now, I could stand here and say, oh, you know, Nothing much going to happen. This is a trigger of the Lord. Meant to be. The Lord would take back his republic. He has said it to me many times. The Lord. We're not dealing just with men here. There is a trigger involved in this, and it has been triggered by the Lone Star State, as was foretold to me 12, 13 years ago. Where it heads, God knows. But if God has his way, and here's my point in prayer, let's see beyond you know what I'm saying? I have to. I have to see beyond my opinions. I have to see beyond my ways. We must have God do something of wisdom in this. Right? He's the man of wisdom, Christ is. So we must have God get a hold of people and leaders, no matter what, listen, I hate to say it this way, what side we're on, I'm on the side of the Lord in this. <laughs> He's made some things clear to me. You may not believe it. I don't really care. Be wrong. 
I'm saying this in a limited way about really this land. And the Lord's made this very clear to me. This land was meant, not the nation, the land was meant to be a land of refuge. It started that way with people coming here. The Lord has been and is in a fight for this land to be a refuge with or without this nation. He told me uh, whenever it becomes a nation, that's when tyrants arise. It's historically true. I'm just trying to give us some God direction in this on how to pray. Some things it's not best to pray, don't let it happen. Instead, may the will of God be done. Fear would guide us wrongly in this. Some would say it's not the will of God that we get involved. Read the Old Testament and realize the God of the Old Testament didn't change. He is always involved. And he gets his people involved. How many realize the fact of that? And the new covenant didn't stop it. Christ's coming enhanced it. God's a stickler for justice. <laughs> How many know that about him? And he will take up the fight for the poor every time. In whatever way man wants that to go. He's game. <laughs> See, most people aren't going to say what I'm going to say. Whatever. I will. I have no fear in this issue. I know what the Lord has told me, and it hasn't been once. It's been 30, 40, 50 times over the last 30, 40 years. So I have something that I must say. I am commanded to it, and if you don't like it, get over yourself. God has something to say. Do we have ears to hear it? Beyond our beliefs, beyond our doctrines, beyond our, uh, I'm sorry, falling back on do nothing. I can tell you what comes out of doing nothing. Nothing. And if our forefathers had been there, people will say, you know, what am I supposed to do? You can pray, can't you? <laughs> I'm not expecting you to take up arms. Do you know how to pray? Or you can die, can't you? <laughs> Those are at least two options. I'm being serious here. We are in a pacifist state as the church of Jesus Christ. And God's not a pacifist. He's an aggressor. <laughs> well, you don't believe that. I don't care whether you believe it or not. He sure hunted me down. You know that? He's a warrior. And the Bible says he is. And when he comes back, he's coming back. We read it in Revelation 19, to make war. Go read it. And he's going to shed blood, Isaiah 63, all over the earth and wade through it. That'll get your stomach turning. I'm sorry, guys, that the church has so watered things down. It's hard for people to hear what I'm trying to say. It is. If we had this mentality, guys, that we presently have, we wouldn't have the United States of America. If we keep this attitude, we won't have it again. Somewhere down the line, God must arise, and we will be utilized by him, at least in prayer. You know that? So uh, it's so easy, it's a cop-out, it's a weakness. It's so easy to doctrinally fight what I'm saying when the truth is staring us in the face in the scriptures, Old and New Testament. You know that, guys? We don't, but whatever. <laughs> I'm simply saying there's a dividing line if God has his way coming to this nation. And the Lord's not concerned about the nation falling. He wants the land. He's the one that made it. And he made it to be a refuge. And it's spoken to me clearly about this remaining a refuge. 
so that the people in other nations could continue to get here to safety if it goes the way God wants it to go. And it may be a partial part of the nation that's the refuge and other parts of it are not. So I applaud the courage it takes to stand up and realize when a tyrannical form of government has arisen. Governor Abbott is right in his assessment and in the truth of our own laws. Now, I know in other nations they don't understand we Americans. That's their problem, not ours. We were born by war. Now we have a wimpy society around us that doesn't understand the first thing about it and the sacrifice of it and the losing of everything so that there could be a posterity not under tyranny. But we'll turn our children over to them, not me. George Washington was not a wimp. You know that? Neither was Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I want to help us to get rewired a bit here. That's why I'm prolonging this. See in what's happening as a trigger. God pulling it. He wants something in this land that if this continues as it is uninterrupted, will be negated. Forgive him if he decides to fight for what he wants. And if humans are in the way, well, let me say it this way, it'd be best to get out of the way and let him have what he wants. So I could ask for a show of hands who agree, but I don't really care. <laughs> I will please the Lord in this. I don't care what you think. You're the one that needs rewiring, not me. How can you say that, Terry? Because I know who I've stood before and who has stood before me. That's how I can say it. And the prophets of old knew that, and they didn't back down, nor will I. And if all you got's a doctrine, and I've got the word of the Lord, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> I'll listen to the Lord, and I am. Is that clear? If you don't like being in a congregation where there's that kind of ministry, sorry, <laughs> why are you here? Go back to your safe place and cry your eyes out a little more. This is brutal, isn't it? Not nearly as much as what it needs to be. We are asleep. We are drunk on the things of this life and on the things of Christianity. We've had it a certain way for so long and we think that's normal. There's nothing normal about this crap called Christianity that's going on. It is abnormal and rejected by the heaven itself. <laughs> it has made us like Israel to have no more blacksmiths in the land so that the Philistines, which represents the flesh, could rule over them. And I tell you, that's what's going on in the house of God. Recent events have proven it even in the leadership. The flesh is ruling from the top down. The flesh. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? We used to really hit this. Where's the warrior spirit? And please understand, I'm not looking for a cry. I'm looking for action. <laughs> not a yell. That's what Israel did. They went out when Goliath was there and yelled and then fight ran when he appeared. I'm not looking for an emotional reaction. I'm not looking for a yell of Israel. I'm looking for something that confronts Goliath with a sword, who's got a sword and you confront him with a stone. <coughs> right? And you got five stones just in case the first one misses. <laughs> Amen. Guys, this is what it means to have the voice of the Lord among you. I shouldn't even have to say that. Counteracts our stupidity, 
our ignorance of our doctrines that has so dulled us down and dubbed us down that there's no fight in us. There's no resist, even the devil. And the devil is involved in what's going on in the nations. Right? Isn't that right, Chris? I know there's warriors among us. I realize that. And then there's those in the battle of your mind right now. How can this be the Lord? You're asking the wrong question. How can it not be? <laughs> We're so confused in this stuff because we've had so-called peace. But the enemy hasn't been at peace. He's been at war. And he has taken ground. How many of you understand that fact? There's no peace in this. There's war. There's a peace in Christ only inwardly. But there's a war going on for the hearts and minds of men everywhere. Isn't that right, Madeline? A war, Madeline. Isn't that right? A war. And you may not have to take up arms, and you may have to, but you can pray. What is my part? Pray. Why do I even have to say that? Wake up. Pray, <laughs> stand in the gap, or die. Anyway, I wish this had better effect upon us, but like a bunch of stumps sitting out in the congregation, <laughs> we're not ready for the truth. We've heard the lie so long, the truth can't be heard. Anyway, guys, sorry to say it that way, but that's what's going on. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm trying to wake you up for the need of real prayer, real prayer, right? You know, your toothache can be put on pause for a moment. There's something else way more weighty happening around us, right? So please understand my heart. I'm not speaking to you as a shepherd right now only. I am, but not only. I'm speaking to you with the voice of the Lord. What you are going to have to decide is whose voice you're going to listen to. Your own? The churches? Or what God has to say in this time? Amen? He is making a bride ready. That means includes for war. <clears throat> we are headed in to the most trying times in our lives. They, are, they have begun and they're in front of us. The conflict of it all. The fiery ordeal. The, hear me. The fiery ordeal is the travail itself of our souls a deliverance of them the tribulation of it is the fiery ordeal that's not us hooping and hollering groaning and moaning I'm talking about real pain real suffering real hardship, real difficult times. That is the travail that will make the bride ready. It is, and it is needed. And because the bride will be made ready at the end, the greatest travail, fiery ordeal, like what Jesus went through, true suffering, true hardship, True difficulty, true battle, true conflict will be in our time. So then couple that with everything else I just said. We have got to wake up. Got to. Stop being offended by stupid stuff and get back in the fight and into the mind of the Lord and the will of God. Amen. So be it, oh me, help us. 
what am I doing at this conference? Well, at least I can say this to you. Uh, if you leave after this, I wouldn't blame you. Save your lives. Run. But some of us aren't running. We're not descended from cowards. <laughs> the cowardly don't enter the kingdom of heaven. That's quoting the scriptures. <laughs> I don't care how you're raised. Get a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Have a new life, a new mind, new understanding. Now, that's the real problem in all this is we've not had enough of the Holy Spirit to see through our own lies that we've convinced ourselves of and deceived ourselves by. So anyway, let me finish so just so Josiah can come and speak. This is a sermon before the sermon, huh? But it's a setup for what Josiah has to say. It really is. For what I'm going to be saying. Guys, we need a leadership that doesn't put up their finger and see which way the wind of this world is blowing and go after it. We need a leadership that doesn't lead from behind. We, doesn't, we, we need a leadership that doesn't see what's important for this hour among the people and get a consensus of what is needed. That's not leadership. We need a leadership that follows the Lord only and can say with absoluteness, follow me as I follow Christ. Right? So uh, I'm not interested, again, in what's being said out there. I pretty much know. Been in this for 40-something years. Seen it, heard it, rejected it. I challenge us in this hour, guys, get on our faces and become the men and women of God we were meant to be. Get that fire shut up in your bones again of a tenaciousness. A great fiery ordeal is upon this generation. A pure bride will come from it. To escape it is to escape readiness. To miss it is to miss the coming of the Lord. What do you think about that, Chris? It's the absolute truth, isn't it? But some of us, how old are you, Chris? He said he was uh, 60. <laughs> 75, still in the fight, right? I'm not kidding you. There's others of us in this room. Age shouldn't have anything to do with it. A warrior is a spirit, not an age. <laughs> right? The ladies, you're a bit wired differently. I understand that about you. Prayer is going to probably be your main component in this, that in speaking the truth and supporting what God is doing. Seriously. That's the truth in this if it comes to what it's going to come to called civil war in our nation, and if God has his way in it, that's exactly what it will come to. That is the will of God. I've known that for how long? 30 years. The will of God is in it as much as the will of God was in the civil war that started this nation. Right? Somebody's got to understand the times, right? Know what God is doing, what he's saying. So, my friends, please, please understand. We can have just your normal old conference, or we can have the word of the Lord for such a time as this. God's got your children, don't fear for them. What I'm talking about is much better than this being dulled down and them fighting the flesh forever and being swallowed up by it. 
Amen? So, all right. So I've said these things so many times before, but it must be said again. Understand the trigger of Texas. That's why I started this conversation. It is no mishap what they've named it. God and flashing neon would get our attention. Understand the times you're in. How many want to understand the times we are in? You are not in the New Testament times. You're in a different time called the end. You need to wake up to that fact. And what went on in the New Testament at a beginning is not the same thing that the Alpha as the Lion is about to show us of himself. I have that for my four-day encounter, the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th of this month in the council of the Lord. The Omega man is about to show himself. So yeah, I'm intense. You can't come through that kind of a council. I've been through many of them. This is one of the most intensive ones I've ever been through. Enjoyed every minute of it. Could only take so much of it. That's why I spread out over four days. So I didn't die. <laughs> the Omega man is a lion. Still a lamb, but a lion. Believe me when I say that to you. He's the man of war. And there's a peace only on the other side of that war. His peace. Amen. Let's stand. A lot I said, um, I hope I, the Lord told me this by direct encounter. This conference was to be a piercing and not of your ears only of the heart he would pierce us and I'm asking for him to I'm talking about myself pierce me with the truth because the truth has been dulled down by the lies of my theology my miscomprehension of who you are I do not know you, be honest, I do not know you as the lion, as the omega man that he called himself repeatedly in the four-day council meeting. And I wasn't the only one in there. The omega man has something to say as to the time we're in. He was not the omega man in the New Testament. He was the alpha. But now... He is the Omega Man. The end is upon us of all things. That's all getting typed up. I'll put it on the website when I can. I was commanded to do so or I wouldn't do it. My friends, we're not living in normal times. And we're not living in yesterday. And let us not live in yesterday. Pierce us, Lord. Pierce us. May the truth do more than offend us or bless us. We've got to get beyond that. Pierce us unto an unveiling again of the man, Christ Jesus. The Omega man, Alpha and Omega, and all that's between it. But the Omega man, the man who appears at the end the man who comes at the end, the man who comes for war at the end, the man who comes to finish the nations, shake them so that they quake before him, shake the church so that it bows before him, shake the universe so that the stars fall out of the skies. That man... May you be exalted and high and lifted up. May we behold you as you are, not as we have seen you before.
I call us, my friends, to be pierced, pierced, pierced of the Lord within our spirit man for the fire of the fiery one Christ with fiery eyes to pierce us again, to kindle within us so that it is no longer lethargy, stalemate, stagnation, but a progression to his image. And the sword of the Lord once again unleashed in the land. I'm talking about coming out of his mouth, the two-edged sword, which is what this is, <laughs> the two-edged sword. Make it so, pierce us with the two-edged sword. Pierce us. Isaiah 66, to this one will I look, to the one who is humble, to the one who is contrite in spirit, and to the one who trembles at my word. And we've forgotten, and we no longer tremble. Pierce us, pierce us, I want to be able to hear. I want conformity. I want the trembling, the effect of the word of the Lord to cause me to tremble. My outward man, my natural man, whatever, my carnal man, tremble at the word of the Lord. Tremble. To this one will I look. To he who is humble, contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. Yes, Lord, pierce, pierce, pierce us. We ask.